Well, hey, what's up, everybody? Happy Faith Friday, even though it's Saturday. We normally do Faith Friday, obviously, on Friday nights. I was hosting a men's conference, so I wasn't able to do that uh, last night. However, here I am tonight on a soulful Saturday. How about that? Saturday sermon. I don't know. We got other names that we can talk about. But the main point is this. We're gathered together today, and we have an opportunity to connect with God and talk about a very important topic, which, again, uh, we we addressed a little bit with the eclipse thing a couple of weeks ago, but it continues to be a recurring conversation. So I feel like we need to address it again. And part of the reason I think we need to address it is now we're a little closer. And I know you guys are seeing that we're actually a little bit closer uh, to that eclipse that's coming. And then there was a set of earthquakes that took place that uh, I think we're kind of just like hitting magnitudes in certain cities in the United States where they could feel it and it was noticeable. And because of that, there was a lot of questions that began to just sort of literally and figuratively shake loose. And that's our recent earthquakes, which happened in New York City, a 4.8 magnitude earthquake and the eclipse, a sign from God. And honestly, just to speak from my heart on this situation, I would say I'm a little bit torn on the on this situation because on the one hand, God's speaking to everyone always through everything. Like if we have eyes to ear, uh, eyes to see and ears to hear, then we actually have an invitation from God to hear Him speaking. And sometimes, even what would be the um, the most mundane things. And so, certainly, God can speak through earthquakes and eclipses and uses historically in the Bible stars and the shaking of the earth and weather patterns to move people and to shape them and to help encourage them, step into wherever they're supposed to be at in their destiny. Historically and biblically, you can make an argument for that without a shadow of a doubt. But yet, on the other hand, one of the problems that I see, especially in the United States of America, it seems to be a little bit more of a prominent issue maybe than some other places, is that it feels like as Americans, we sort of just write ourselves into the scripture. It's like one thing happens in USA and all of a sudden it's like, oh, my gosh, God's speaking to us. And it's like, actually, no, it's just like a normal thing that happens and there's not some level of spiritual significance at all. Because if you think about it, you know, Taiwan had an earthquake that was, you know, over seven magnitude just a couple days before that. Nobody was saying anything. Then a 4.8 happens in New York. There's no damage. Nobody lost their life. They're just a little shaky for, you know, a second. And then all of a sudden, everybody's like, oh, no, the world's ending. It's God communicating to us. And they kind of go down this whole rabbit trail. Yet when it happens in Taiwan, people don't even talk about it. It seems like I don't remember anybody talking online about what happened in Taiwan, which is the same, you know, same thing that happened in New York, just much more significantly worse. And then everybody tries to make what's happening in New York, you know, spiritually significant. And I'm not saying it is or it isn't. I'm just saying for you, for you to be able to see where I'm at from a spiritual perspective, I want you to see that I'm in a situation where I'm saying, listen, on the one hand, yes, God is communicating with us. And then on the other hand, why do we kind of be like history revisionists where we write ourselves right into the mix of every single thing potentially spiritually. And so there's a conflict that exists there, a natural conflict. And that's a tension that as we have this conversation today is one that needs to be realized and talked about. I'll show you an example too. Like, okay, uh, let me just share my screen. So I just Googled earthquakes earlier today. And um, here's the earthquakes that took place the past, you know, here's, Here's a 3.2 earthquake in California. Nobody said anything about it. Here's a 3.8 earthquake in Bedminster. Nobody said anything about it. There's that 4.8 one in New Jersey, which shook um, New York City. Here's a 6.8 in Saipan. Ain't nobody saying anything about the one in Saipan. Guess what? I know a missionary in Saipan. Guarantee you they're posting on there about it because they're nervous that there's going to be a tsunami. So I knew about the one in Saipan. I ain't heard nobody else talk about that. A 6.8 is much more significant than a 4.8, but nobody's talking about the 6.8, and that's the problem that I have sometimes in this is there's a 4.8 in New Jersey that impacts New York City, and everybody in America is like, oh, my gosh, the world's ending. God's communicating with us. It's like God's been long trying to communicate with us. Here's a 6.1 in Japan. Nobody talks about it. Here's the 6.4 in Taiwan, uh, 6.2. And this is just the past three, four days. I mean, there's little earthquakes that happen nonstop all day long, every day. This is an interactive map of earthquakes. You guys can see right here. 
uh, just in the United States, there's a 3.0 that took place in Hennessy, Oklahoma. There's that um, one in New Jersey. You look over here in California. Uh, it's a 3.2 that took place in California. There was two in Texas. There's a 2.6 and a 2.5 that took place. Look at um, what's going on down here. Golly, all of these U.S. Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, the, covered in earthquakes. I mean, covered in earthquakes. By the way, this is just the past day. All of these little yellow dots on the screen are earthquakes from the past, you hear me? Day, okay? The past day, okay? Well, there's earthquakes right here in Hawaii. Hawaii. So I just want us to be like totally just transparent. Oh, whoops. I'm so goofy. You guys can't see my map. Please forgive me. I'm, my brain's feeling a little tired. Okay, now you can see my map. Look at the map. Okay, there. Here's this was in the past day. Berkeley, California, 3.2. Two in Texas. This is in the past day, guys. Here's one in Oklahoma. Okay, here's a four point or a 2.5 in New Jersey. There was a 4.6 right here in Tonga. There's a 4.9 right here. Um, in Taiwan, here's a 3.1 in Alaska. Look, Alaska's covered. You guys see this? Alaska is covered in earthquakes. Ain't nobody talking about it. Go down here. Puerto Rico is surrounded by earthquakes. Ain't nobody talking about it. Right here, another earthquake in Nicaragua. I mean, 4.4. Ain't nobody talking about it. And I've been, I was actually. I'm just cur I'm curious out of people who are watching right now would you put on in the chat if you um have experienced an earthquake before if you've actually been in the middle of experiencing an earthquake uh, put a one in the chat if you've never experienced it but you want to put a two in the chat if you've never experienced it and you don't ever care if you do put a three in the chat I have experienced an earthquake before uh I was in the Philippines and I was speaking in a on a very rural community and there was actually um, not even really electricity. They were like running things off of generators where we were at. Um, I did have cell phone signal if I climbed the mountain uh, and the whole everything started. It, it, actually, it sounded like a train. Bef like you could hear the earthquake coming before it came. It was there was a whistle. It was like that for like 10 seconds. And then it was an earthquake and I don't know. The people there acted like nothing was going on, but it was a, it was a significant enough earthquake to cause floods and for the schools to be shut down for several days. Uh, it was a scary experience. It certainly was. It wasn't anything to, to laugh about. It was a scary experience. Um, and so it is what it is. It, it was a, it was a, an unusual and in scary experience, make no mistake about it. Now, Sean Bowles, who's a friend of mine, actually has a YouTube channel uh, where he, he has a TV show and a YouTube channel where he gives a prophetic perspective about current events and things like that. Okay. And so one of the things that he does is he talks about the eclipse being a prophetic perspective. And I want to hear uh, from him. Amy Heights, thank you so much. Cat Joy, thank you for that super sticker. And Cat Joy, thank you for gifting those memberships. You are absolutely amazing. Let's see what Sean has to say about this. So the eclipse is coming. I don't know if you know this, but there's an eclipse coming up in the first week of April. And I say that, I meant to say this too, and I my brain is kind of tired. I meant to say, listen, if you've experienced an eclipse, which I did last time that there was an eclipse, I was right in the heart of it, experienced it, you're not scared. Somehow people, somehow the media... And really, demons, I feel like, get people all riled up and scared about things that are not scary. Okay? Which, okay, we just call it what it is. That's what an eclipse is. They've been happening forever. If you've been a part of an earthquake, they are scary, especially the larger magnitude ones. Like the one I was on was like 6.8 or maybe 7.7 7 something. It is scary. Uh, it is, there is a little bit of, uh, and then like for the next several days, you have to worry about aftershocks. It, it is scary. And the Bible actually does talk about in the last days, there's going to be earthquakes. And so that's part of the reason why when there's earthquakes, that people start to have a little bit of fear. Uh, so I don't know. I'm just sharing all of it to say, 
I'm speaking from experience on both of these things. I've been in the middle of an eclipse, literally where the whole world descended upon my community last time. Uh, I mean, the town I was living in was a little tiny town. Almost nobody lived there, but it was right in the heart of the eclipse path. And the entire traffic, everything was shut down. And I'm sure that the same thing is going to happen again this time because it's a rare community where the eclipse it's a very, you know, where the eclipse X marks the spot. It's where the eclipse went over last time, and they're going over that same area again this time. And I find that to be very unusual. What are the chance that the same eclipse would go over the same spot? Feels That feels rare to me, but it doesn't feel scary. It feels like a phenomenon that they can predict. It feels like something they know is going to happen, unlike unlike earthquakes. Hey, 911 operator, thank you so much for that super sticker. You are awesome. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play what Sean has to say about the eclipse. And then there's some a couple of other commentaries about what was going on with the earthquake. And I want to share that. And then I just want to tell you guys, just from my heart, the way that we can process that. From, I, I believe, a spiritual perspective with our faith intact. I just say this too. Like, somebody told me that, you know, they're, they're, it, the eclipse scares them, makes them think it's the end of the world, etc. And they have a spirit of fear attached to it. And well, God didn't give you a spirit of fear. God doesn't want you to run away and hide from things that are difficult to process. That's not the Lord. That's the devil that causes you to feel and sense and see those things. And so uh, I would just say from my perspective, if you're experiencing fear around this topic, if this is one of those topics that um, causes your heart rate to increase, if this is one of those things where you're like, well, it's inevitable, it's happening, you know, everything's about to fall apart. If that's kind of like your attitude, that's not, to me, that's not a, a godly attitude. It's not a Christian attitude. It's not a biblical attitude because I know that God didn't give us a spirit of fear. But he gave us power, love, and a sound mind. And I just declare over you that are watching right now, there's a sound mind for you. God has a sound mind in store for you. And I, I just want to make sure that we step into that, okay? And I've been following so many Christian prophetic Instagram and YouTube accounts for years. And they hardly <laughs> ever come up in my feed, honestly. But something that's been front and center over and over all week long and even last week is the upcoming eclipse and something gets a sign from God. Others think it's going to be a line in the sand of some big catastrophic event. And then there's even more to it because some people think that the government's going to be doing something during the eclipse. There's all this conspiracy out there that may not be conspiracy. I don't know if it's conspiracy or not, but I did read that NASA is shooting rockets at the eclipse. And that had people scared. Like, hang on a second. Why is NASA shooting rockets into the path of the solar eclipse. Why would you need to shoot a rocket at the solar eclipse? I really don't know. They're actually launching three rockets in two days from now. Seriously, I don't know anymore. You you don't know any. Ever since COVID, none of us knows anything anymore. But then there's also the government putting together a readiness plan of action for the cities where the eclipse is going to be most visible because people are going to be descending on those places. And some of these towns are so small, and they're expecting millions of people to come to watch this once-in-a-lifetime eclipse. Well, from my own Christian perspective, I want to tell you what I think about the upcoming eclipse and what it can be seen as, because I think it can be really significant in the sense of what it is as a sign from God. And this is huge when you think of it this way. I hope this helps you, because you know God could be signaling to us that there's a potential breakthrough in our lives and our country. And throughout the Bible, we see instances, and I'm going to say this before I get into my prophetic perspective on it, but we see times where God uses celestial phenomenon and these signs and these symbols to communicate messages to his people all the time. In the book of Joel, there's a powerful prophecy that speaks of signs in the heavens before the great and awesome day of the Lord. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Now, this is Joel 2, verse 31, and we've heard a lot about the blood moons. If you haven't heard about the blood moons is a whole thing, my my brothers and sisters that are watching. Happy caffeinated couple. Great point, by the way. Congratulations for being with us for 28 months. You said, we so agree. The Lord does not want us to operate from fear. That has to be in the center of our heart. God doesn't want us to make decisions to live or even process out of fear. So thank you, happy, happy caffeinated couple, for emphasizing that. And Jennifer Swain, thank you so much for that amazing super sticker. You are amazing. It's really interesting to see how people have put together 
the uh, prophetic words about blood moons, especially Jonathan Kahn and others who we love. Uh, I'm not saying I agree with all the words or the perspectives, but I think they're, they're, they're notable to look at and see how people are interpreting these things as potential signs of things that are happening around us in the world. So I have been following these things for a while. Many important voices are talking about these things. And this passage even suggests that celestial events such as eclipses could really serve as an indicator to significant spiritual shifts and divine interventions. And of course, we can predict that these things are going to come sometimes scientifically. We know the rhythm. It's going to come every 10 years, every 100 years, every seven years on different celestial issues. But sometimes they come unannounced, or sometimes when they do come, they bring something that we weren't expecting. And in the New Testament, Jesus himself talks about signs in the heavens. And as precursors to his return, he says there's going to be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and on the earth. And nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea, the ocean. So Luke 21, 25 says this, and it reinforces this idea I'm telling you that heavenly signs really can carry spiritual significance and they can herald important changes in the course of human history. So here are my thoughts. I really want to tell you this because I think it might help you for this particular time. And even if you don't believe this is a direct sign of this, it can give you courage as, as to what we're dealing with right now. We're in a moment where darkness look like, looks like it's as big as the light in the spiritual battle that we've been raging you know, with. I think it's a very interesting point. We are in a situation, we are living in a culture right now where the darkness of humanity seems like it's even bigger than the light. And I, I actually think that there's a tension that we need to learn how to manage and live in where it's like there certainly are some critiques about some things, in my opinion, that are happening in the United States of America that we need to vocalize and try to push against because there's an encroachment from the devil on our society that's actually taking the fabric and DNA of what makes us great and tearing it apart. But at the same time, we still need to continue to verbalize that the United States of America is an amazing nation that's have a providential history from God that he actually created and uh, is using to send missionaries out around the world and further the kingdom of God. I feel like God is continuing to give this the the nation of America uh, you know opportunity after opportunity humble itself pray fall on our knees and that God would restore us and there's reason for that this is a great nation this is an amazing place to grow up it, the uh, if you think about some of the countries around the world that are stuck in poverty that are stuck in and corrupt government systems and i'm not saying that ours isn't totally corrupt but there are opportunities for us to fix things when they're broken when other people have no option for it and they're in a situation where um, the richest people in their society are equal to the poorest people in our society uh, that the, the it, there are nations around the world where the poorest people in the united states of america are extremely wealthy in many nations around the world and that is a, that's really challenging to think about there are people who live on five dollars a month there's people who live on 10 cents a day in certain places and it, it, it's almost impossible unless you've been to some of those places which i have it's almost impossible to imagine or envision that that's a reality and I, I'm just here to tell you that what God's done and is continuing to do in the United States of America is amazing. And it, it's a story that needs to be told. And we need to have pride that if you're from America, and I know we have people from all around the world that watch this YouTube channel, but if you happen to be uh, from the United States of, of America and you're watching this channel, we need to have pride in this nation that we have the freedom of speech, that we can go to church, that we can worship, uh, that we have been given um, a lot of luxury and resources, not for our own building up or material wealth, but so that we can actually increase the kingdom of God. That's something powerful that doesn't exist in a lot of places. And so I just want to encourage you, if you're watching, I know there's some very real critiques that we need to talk about in our land, but at the same time, there's a lot of blessing and opportunity that we have still, and we need to trumpet it because if we continue to not declare a thing as a thing, it will no longer be a thing. And the best way to preserve what makes this nation great is to declare that we're still doing those things you understand what i'm saying it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy is if all we do is complain the whole time about the way that things are it, and i'm not trying to um ignore those things but i am trying to just highlight that this is an, a, a nation of opportunity and promise 
Patty Davila, thank you so much. Cat Joy, woo wee. Cat Joy, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Angela, thank you so much for that super sticker. I know that I've been facing spiritual giants. I know some of you have. There's been a battle right now in culture. There's been a battle in church movements. There's been a battle in relationships. There's been a battle in the economy. There's been a battle from people group to people group. And we're watching values and morality and these kinds of things get so challenged. And sometimes the darkness looks bigger than the light in certain areas and segments of culture or issues. And it looks like the enemy might be winning or that he's dwarfing the light or he's covering the light up. And that morality and virtue seem to be eclipsed. But there's about to be a breakthrough. And from a prophetic standpoint, the eclipse represents a moment of real divine alignment and intervention. You know, just as the moon temporarily obscures the light of the sun during an eclipse, there's some areas of our lives where darkness might seem to be prevailing or areas of our businesses or country or social issues or whatever that the enemy looks like he's prevailing in or that man's sinful nature looks like it's hindering the ability to see clearly or experience really the fullness of God's blessing. But like the moment when the sun emerges once again, breaking through the darkness, the eclipse can signify the season of breakthrough and illumination in our lives. And I think even as this eclipse comes, I think that there's a breakthrough happening in society and culture right now saying, this stuff that's been happening with the gender confusion, this stuff that's been happening with identity politics, this stuff that's been happening with extreme progressive moral you know, issues, this stuff that's been happening against uh, or that's pro-abortion or, or uh, yeah, pro-abortion, these kinds of things look like they're dwarfing what God's doing, but they're not at all. It looks like they're blotting out or blocking out the light, but they're not at all. As a matter of fact, they can only hold their position for so long until the alignment comes where the sun is always in its right position. It's always revolving. It's always seen. It's always visible. And when it's, it has these moments of obscurity from an eclipse, it's only for a second as, there's a, as there is an alignment that's happening. And as believers, we're really called to discern the times and the seasons. You know, Matthew 16, verse 3 says, be watchful for the signs of God's activity in the world around us. And this upcoming eclipse, cancer, as a reminder, that God is sovereign over all creation. Everything's happening. Everything's happening in culture. Everything's happening in politics. Everything that's happening in churches, that God is intimately involved in the affairs of humanity, and especially because he has believers position in so many areas around the world right now. And this is a real call of prayer. It's a call of repentance. Really, it can be a spiritual renewal. I mean, a lot of people need that renewal. It's like we've run out of why we believe what we believe other than we love God. And all of a sudden, we get spiritually renewed where we get refocused, recentered on biblical truth and biblical knowledge of who God is. We get refocused on the hunger for God's spirit to invade our lives. And as we anticipate that God has a fullness, as God's light is going to fully dawn, and you think of Isaiah 16, where it says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is upon the earth. And see, thick darkness covers the earth, but God's light is upon you. And it's really God's promises and the manifestation of his kingdom on the earth. Well, we have a Spiritual Growth Academy. I want to encourage you. Many of you are feeling to call to be a light and shine like a city on the earth. Whatever it is, this is a passages about celestial signs that are negative. And that came up quite a bit in my social media feed. I was surprised by how many people felt like there's a judgment coming or that God's preparing us because um, there's going to be something that happens during the eclipse that the government is up to a lot. The same kind of people who are believing, and I'm not saying this is wrong if you're one of them, that Maui fires were, were caused by some you know Project Blue Beam or some sort of laser beam are the same kinds of people who are maybe believing that the government's going to take advantage of an eclipse time. And that's why there's so much readiness and preparedness that goes along with it. They're not looking at it as these areas are being descended by millions of people. And so the cities are, are ready for food shortages and all their services to be used. And that's why maybe National Guard is being brought in. They're looking at it as more, you know, there's even one person who put together how many Nineveh cities are in the line of where you can see the eclipse the best. I mean, you look at the biblical city of Nineveh, you know, with Jonah, where he was sent there to give a word of judgment, but they repented. And so he was sent back to release God's blessing and actually agree with what God wanted to do with them. So a lot of people are feeling like it's a Jonah time. So there's a lot of other words and prophetic perspectives that came up, especially when it came to believing that the government might be up to something negative or insidious. And I just thought about that, like even in the midst of it, if you believe some of that, the good news is that God's always up to more than the enemy is. And God always trumps the enemy's plans. God always has the enemy in checkmate, not just check. Whereas the enemy looks like he has humanity in check. Sometimes God always checkmates the enemy. So if we're going to witness the eclipse and we want to... God always checkmates the enemy. Did you hear what he just said? God always checkmates the enemy. Listen, the enemy may have one plan and he may think he has the upper plan, upper hand. But at the end of the day, God always checkmates the enemy. Listen, no matter what you are up against today, whether it is 
uh, some fear attached to what's going on in this situation or a problem in your own life. There is not one battle that you are facing that the creator of the universe can't allow you to step into success and victory from. When we trust God with every single intimate detail of our heart and we allow him to do what he does, which turns us into victors and more than conquerors and head and not the tail. And uh, the Bible actually says he has plans to prosper us and not to harm us. We experience that victory through the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus onto our lives. And I just want to encourage you, if you're watching, that God always checkmates the enemy. If you feel like the enemy, the devil won, listen, that devil is a liar. And he's trying to get you to come into agreement with him. And I just declare right now for you to step out of agreement with the devil and step into agreement with what the word of God says. All right? Okay? If you're with me, say amen in the comment section. I'm gonna look at it as a prayerful expectation of what God can do, not just be afraid of what the enemy government could do or what if, if you're feeling that way or if you're feeling like maybe it's going to be cause solar flares. So there's a scientific viewpoint that the earth is going to be uh, turning on its axis a certain way and it could, or not the earth, the, the sun will be turning on its axis a certain way and it could cause some flare-ups that are the equivalent of EMPs and cause power outages and mass uh, issues with our power grids and that kind of thing. <clears throat> Again, we don't know. We don't, we've never had that happen before. We don't know what it could look like. But God's faithfulness is over America, over the world, God's faithfulness where he is going to return. And not everything that Jesus needs to happen has happened on the earth for his return yet. Otherwise, he would have been here right now. And so I have full confidence that regardless of how you interpret the eclipse and regardless of what it may be to you, that of course it's good to be prepared with extra supplies. Look at my videos on preparedness over the last couple of weeks on these Sunday services, these prophetic perspectives. But at the same time, you don't want to get into a place where you live in fear. You don't want to get into a place where you are always thinking the bad is going to happen. The ball is going to drop. And there's impending doom. Because before there's impending doom, there's impending glory of God. God can work in any construct of society, even if it's completely oppressive to Christians. And that's happening all over the world. And we don't always see it here on the Western side of the world. But it's happening over the world where Christians are still thriving in the midst of their faith and seeing kingdom transformation. Because salvation is what's at issue. So I... I do want to say that many see the upcoming eclipse as this, you know, wonderful wonder, wonder about wonders, but others harbor concerns about its dangers associated with the phenomena or the government or the actual sun itself. And so we need to be prayerful and vigilant to have empathy for each other, why we might believe different things about the eclipse. Karen, this is a great example. She said, does anybody remember Y2K? People, um, freaked out at Y2K. Every cash register is going to stop working. Blah, 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 blah. The whole world's going to shut down. The infrastructure can't hold it. You better just prepare. Better be stocked up, etc. Go down the list. And then at the end of the day, clock ticked to the year 2000 and not a thing happened. It was business as usual. And the fear and pandemonium is oftentimes created by the media for clicks and glicks. Oops. And ultimately, my prophetic perspective works for all of us because we know that God wants to bring a season of breakthrough where Jesus has seen more clearly in that we could look at his face in the midst of these kinds of things and discern what he wants to do. And that's what's ultimately important is that we look for what God's doing when we hear these bad reports. So if you're seeing an increase of videos that are maybe causing some fear, or what if it's a scientific thing and the sun, you know, short circuits to some degree or something happens to the sun, or what if it's a government thing, or what if there's bad patterns that are going to happen because of, I mean, there's even some Illuminati stuff that was on there. Sort of conspiracy based. So, what if some of these other things happen? Well, God's always on the throne. God's still doing what He's doing. So, ask Him what He's doing in your life and what you can apply your faith to. And that's what you're accountable for. Not the bigger pictures of what's happening everywhere else, but what you can have faith to express love through God's heart for the world around you. And that's really, really important. And you might want to, again, stock up on, you know, foods and water. And that's always important. You might want to really change your approach to how you look at these. Uh, these events, whether you're looking at it through a glass half full or half empty or overflowing, that you still want to take precautions. And that's always a good thing to do. It's always good to be informed. If you're curious about it, be really curious and look at a lot of perspectives, not just one sidedness. Look for perspectives. If you're hearing my positive perspective, and if you hear some negative perspectives, don't be afraid of those things because the, we're all faith based in our own way. We're all looking at like, what do we have faith that's going to happen in this season? And for me, I think of Psalm 91, verse 5 through 7, where it reminds believers that. We don't need to fear the dangers of the day. But God is our refuge. He's our fortress. He's protecting us from harm. So 
as we're ending this, I want to encourage you if you're. And I think it's a good point that he's making. Like you either believe that God's going to take care of you or you don't. You, you either believe that we're in the palm of his hand or you don't. The Bible says the earth is his footstool. We are his creation. And listen, there's going to be challenges. There's going to be, con there's natural consequences of the sin of humanity. There's evil running rampant, but there's also godly people running rampant. And so the darkness sometimes feels like it's overwhelming, but that's just an opportunity for you to shine your light. It's an opportunity for you to share it with the people in the world around you. Now, I want to share just a couple of things I saw online. This is from a pastor um, here in Tennessee. He said, warning, unpopular post. And I don't know if I believe this or not, to be honest, but I thought it was an interesting perspective, and I'll share why here in just a second. But he said, War warning, very unpopular post, proceed at your own risk. The more our government forsakes, blames, and pushes against Israel, the more earthquakes, destructions, calamities, and financial ruin America is going to experience. The Bible is plain. When you touch Israel, you touch the apple of God's eye. If you are a Jew hater, don't even comment. I'll block you without hesitation. I stand with Israel. And he says, so does his church. And I certainly stand with Israel based on what the scripture says and believe in what the Bible says. And I, I don't know if there's some connection there, but I do know the Bible says if you bless Israel, you pray for Israel, pray for peace of Jerusalem, you will be blessed. And that's something that we need to continue to think and, and pray about for our own lives. If you bless and pray for Israel, you will be blessed. You as a nation will be blessed if you pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And so we got to make sure that we're doing that, supporting lawmakers that do that, from my opinion. Um, now, is there a direct consequence of natural disasters in your nation if you don't do that? I don't know, but I do know that probably the hand or the favor of God lifts a little bit the more and more and more that you go away from uh, pr protecting and praying for Israel. Now, here's a friend of mine named Taylor. She made this post. I mean, it went super viral, 16,000 likes. And I just wanted to um, share with you what she said. I mean, I'm shocked that she got so much action on this, but it says God's trying to get our attention. A 4.8 magnitude in earthquake in New York and New Jersey, 4.8 earthquake in Brazil, eclipse on 4.8. So a 4.8 earthquake in New York, 4.8 earthquake in Brazil. The eclipse is on April 8th, 4.8. Okay, interesting. The Bible verses containing 4.8 speak on attacks of Israel. God restoring Israel, repentance, protection for believers, and the return of Jesus. They all plotted to come together and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble. Nehemiah 4 8. Okay. You see what why I'm why I was sharing that verse or that thing that that other pastor wrote. So she's sharing, like, hey, all of these verses are about Israel. Nehemiah 4 8. They plotted to come against Israel. Micah 4 8. As for you, Jerusalem. The citadel of God's people, your royal might and power will come again. You, the kingship will be restored for my precious Jerusalem, declares the Lord. Again, Israel. Amos 4 8. People staggered from town to town for water, but they did not have anything to drink. Jeremiah 4 8. So put on sackcloth, lament and wail, for the fierce anger of the Lord has not turned away. James 4 8. Come close to God and he'll come close to you. Wash your hands and purify your hearts because your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Romans 4, 8, what joy for those who record the uh, the Lord has cleared of sin, whose record the Lord has cleared of sin. Psalm 4, 8, in peace I'll lie down and sleep for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. And then 2 Timothy, um, and now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness, uh, which the Lord, the righteous does, will give me on the day of his return. The prize is not just for me, but all who eagerly wait for his appearing. And so those verses are about Israel. It's about repentance. It's about protection for believers. And it's about the return of Jesus. So you can look at those things and say, is God, is God speaking to us about the 4-8, April 8th, and what's going on in Israel? It's very interesting for Taylor to make that post, in my opinion. Jennifer Swain, thank you so much for your amazing super sticker. You are awesome. You are awesome. And then um, sometimes we play some stuff from Mike Signorelli here, National who's living in New York. 
and he gave a prophetic perspective. And I want to share that really quickly of the earthquake that took place with campuses across the country. And we raise up prophets. We train them. We have a prophetic presbytery every January where we present what we believe will happen for the upcoming year. God does nothing without first revealing it to his prophets. If you believe that, smash the thumbs up and give me an amen. And so we believe that God will speak and show show things. And, and so at the sake of sounding like a cliche charismatic or Pentecostal, I do want to tell you the two top prophetic voices of our entire church, they both released one by written word and the other one by spoken word in a voice memo. And this happened in January 11th and then January 14th. They both individually released words about an earthquake in New York, tectonic plates shifting and the significance of it. And so I, I believe that this is major confirmation. My phone has been off the, the, the ringer as soon as it happened. People want to know am i safe am i okay and let me just say this our entire staff is safe we are okay uh it, it doesn't seem to have produced a, a, a significant amount of damage although we are going to stay tuned for any uh, potential victims of this or people that are you know that maybe did get hurt in the midst of it and as a ministry we will deploy help and we will be there on a ground level which obviously we're a new york city based church as well as a long island campus and then recently new jersey so we're going to be talking shortly about what does this mean now if it is a sign and i'm staking my name and ministry reputation on the fact that this is a sign and i don't care about the naysayers and those who would say oh this guy's sensationalizing it he's doing this for clicks he's doing this for views Anybody who's well acquainted with my ministry knows that I hate the internet and I have no interest in being famous. I will tell you this, though. God has always used earthquakes uh, in the scriptures. It's very clear. We're going to be looking at some of these uh, right now. But I promise you, it is a sign. This is a sign. And not only do I point to the rarity of these things, these natural phenomenon happening in this region of the Northeast, but I also point to the fact that I've got two people very close to me that may even be joining us in this broadcast in a few moments that actually provided insights into what the significance of this earthquake was. As a matter of fact, it challenged my faith. And let me tell you why. Because when I read their words, I didn't understand it and thought that they were mentioning earthquakes simply in an, a metaphorical sense or as, as a part of imagery, not realizing that it actually was uh, a literal earthquake. But I want to tell you that there are birthing pangs that are happening right now. You know, some of you are asking me about the eclipse, the solar eclipse. You know what? But here's the thing. Not everything is a sign, but if nothing's a sign to you, it means you're missing the signs. OK, so and Very sometimes true. the totality of all of this is pointing to something. It's an awakening. It's a it's an awareness. He's getting your attention. All of life stopped moments ago for people all across the Northeast as they begin to recognize business as usual has stopped. Things are shaking. My home is shaking. My school is shaking. My place of business is shaking. I cannot just, I cannot go about business as usual. And so God is quite literally getting your attention right now. You know, the Bible talks about that in the end times, it's going to, there's going to be two people walking on a hill and one is going to disappear and the other one's going to remain. They're going to act as if you know, everything is normal, but then normalcy is going to be disrupted. And so in the very least, for those of you who are naysayers, for those of you who are thinking that I'm sensationalizing this moment, understand in the very least that you must be vigilant. You must be sober minded. You must be on mission. You must be asking the Holy Spirit, why am I here for such a time as this? Why was I born for this generation? And so I, before we bring them on, I just want to say in the Old Testament, and you see this in Amos chapter one, verse one and two, an earthquake represents an impending sign of God's judgment. And you literally he says the words of Amos, one of the shepherds of, of Takeo, he says the vision he saw concerning Israel two years before the earthquake. 
when Uzziah was king of Judah and Jeroboam, son of Joash, was the king of Israel. The Lord roars from Zion and thunders from Jerusalem. The pastures of the shepherds dry up and the top of Carmel withers. And here the earthquake serves as a sign of eminent judgment. The judgment of God is upon us. The judgment is upon That's what it represents in Amos. And so you see this. And there was a time before the earthquake. There was a time when God was warning. There was a time where God was giving second chances and third chances and fourth chances and fifth chances. And so I bet you there's people in New York and in New Jersey right now who are asking themselves, is this a sign of a second chance, a third chance? Am I still here to be able to respond to the heart of God? This is very, very, very important. Why don't you share this broadcast with three people right now to wake them up? Matter of fact, look at the timing of the earthquake. Many people, and I saw it go viral on X. They were saying, they were saying, it woke me up. I was laying in bed trying to sleep in. It was the late morning. What does that mean? Come on, I've got chills all over my body right now. The Lord's trying to say, wake up. Wake up for those of you who are slumbering, for those of you who are sleeping, for those of you who have who you know the heart of God but have not yielded to him. It's been felt in Connecticut. It's been felt in New Jersey. It's been felt on Long Island. Wake up. And of course, you're going to have Christians saying, this isn't a sign. Well, what do you do with Prophet Joshua Hamster's message on Instagram that only got a couple hundred likes January 11th, 2024, when he said there is a shaking, there is an earthquake that's coming to New York, and here's what it means. What do you do with that? What do you do with Prophet Randall, who sends a voice memo and says, I just got out of the shower. There are tectonic uh, plates shifting in the Northeast, and here's what it represents. The prophets were prophesying, just like Amos. They were saying something is here. Now, is everything a sign? No way. We're not weirdos. But if nothing is a sign to you, you are missing the signs that God is sending. I've got chills all over my body right now. I love that. Like, awaken to this. The other thing that that earth. I love that he's like, no way, we're not weirdos. <laughs> oh, Patty Davila, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Renee says, Tyler, this is exciting times. We're all here for such a time as this. God is so amazing. I can I consider it an enormous privilege to be alive right now because we're living in historic times and God's trusting us. Each of us have a certain DNA that God put in us to be alive for such a time as this. And that's exactly it, Renee. God puts you on this earth with the perfect set of DNA to be alive, to usher in his kingdom right now in what I believe to be historic and a, a historic era. Cat Joy, thank you so much for that super sticker. And Amy Heights, you as well. Earthquakes represent biblically now, because I'm bringing it back to scripture. And this is how ancient people would have interpreted these types of situations. They would have understood it as God's power on display. Pastor Mike, explain that to me. Psalm chapter 46, verse 1 through 3 says this. God is our refuge, refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the seas, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, we will not fear. And so it represents God's power on display. Many of you have been feeling uneasy. Easy. Comment in the comment section if in the weeks leading into this earthquake you have felt uneasy. Maybe you have felt as though as though something is transacting, something is changing, something is shifting. Let me know if you've been feeling that. There's a premonition. There's, there's a suspicion that you have. And then these things begin to happen and it, it serves as a confirmation. But what does it mean? It means that we on Wall Street, the banking industry went to work today, just like they do every day. And they begin to order their own steps and make their own plans and 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 determine the markets and and how they but then all of a sudden the shaking is is a that was a reminder even to Wall Street 
that there is God Almighty who sits on his throne and there are phenomenon that remind us of how futile our efforts are, how puny, how little, how small we are in comparison to the grandeur and the greatness of God. And so sometimes earthquakes are a re reminder of God's power, that we are just like little ants on an ant hill. And that ant hill called New York City, where they go and they manipulate markets and, and they serve the Okay. And yeah, here we've got a uh, prophet Randall coming in now. And then Randall, can you hear me? Man of God? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. We're going to read pro uh, prophet Josh's statement from uh, Instagram from January 11th here in a moment. But I know that on January 14th, you sent a prophetic word via voice memo to prophet josh for accountability and you mentioned tectonic plate shifting and the significance of it i just want to give you a moment um to to tell everybody what was happening and to kind of narrate that yeah say that again pastor mike i i uh i missed that it was going in and out i want you to narrate what happened on january 14th when you released the word about tectonic shapes uh tectonic plates shifting and 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 you did that from new york so you were actually on long island and the lord gave you that prophetic word and then you begin to release it via voice memo on the 14th of january and you sent it over to prophet josh for accountability here we are just three months later with the confirmation. So what was happening as you were in New York three months ago, getting that visual and that word about this happening? Yeah, I remember that morning. Um, it was Sunday. And I just want to say thank you, Pastor Mike, for um, having me on here. Um, Apostle Mike, uh, Prophet Mike, uh, you know, and and I, I, I remember uh, connecting with Pastor Josh and just saying, I just need to send this word out. And I've never done that before. Um, you know, I would write down stuff. I put that on, um, on my voice note, but I decided to send that over. And um, and I remember just feeling like I was getting ready for church that morning. And I just started to feel like this, this, I just got that visual of, of tectonic, tectonic plates just shifting. And, you know, as a prophet, sometimes these things pop into your mind. Um, and, and I, and I, I'm like, what is this? Why Why is this even happening? Why am I thinking about this? And I was like, wait, I think God is speaking to me right now. And so um, I just started to um, record it. And I'll tell you this, Pastor Mike, it's funny because exactly what you were talking about saying the um, books, if you have a book, write it out. If you, if you, if you feel like there's influence inside of you, like God has given you influence, then go ahead and, and, and take that influence and run with it for the Lord. Like so many of us are trying to figure out, um, okay, let me, let me read the books. Let me prepare myself. But I don't believe God is, God has been preparing you. Yeah. You've been in preparation for, for, for so long. And many people will have this paralysis analysis where they'll put themselves in a position where I have Jeez. to go read the book. I have to go figure it out. I got to go do all of these things. But while you are doing that, there are people that are in need of your word, of the word that God has placed inside of you. And I'm, 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 <laughs> listen, until today, I'll tell you this, pastor, like until today, I didn't know. I, I, I just text pastor Josh prophet josh yesterday and i said prophet i don't know if i'm i'm really like you guys say uh yeah prophet randall and this that and the third and i'm like all right i know that i encourage others i know i do this but i want to make sure i'm moving in the in the office the way that god has called me to move in the office and if this is really what's happening right now then how do i know that's what it is and then today happens wow and then today yeah. happens Wow. And I think that that's so significant what you just said, because you took a risk. And on the 14th of January, because I saw the receipts because we were posting the screenshots, you got out of the shower and you sent a voice memo to Prophet Josh. And, and, and I heard the voice memo, which um, after you jump off here in a sec, I'll play the voice memo for the listeners so they can hear just the intro where you, you plainly say that there are tectonic plates shifting. It's in this region. Here's what it represents. And I got the receipts. I mean, I saw this and then two and a half, three months later, it happens in New York. But I think what I find interesting is that Josh also. All right, y'all, I want you to stay tuned because we're going to hear from Prophet Josh as well. I've got his Instagram post pulled up 
And it's funny because it's obviously climbing in, in likes and people are starting to see this right now, but it was posted 12 weeks ago and it was a prophetic word. And he said, read this and get ready. And so prophet Josh Hamstra is going to be on with us in a second. Now, for those of you who don't know him, he oversees our school, the prophets, and he oversees raising up the prophets and the prophetic people of V1 church. And he also spoke this word two days before uh, Randall as well. And so they're both obviously not even the same region, the same area uh, of the country, but they begin to say this as well. Hey, come on. There he is. Hey, Pastor Mike. Come on. So Prophet Josh, uh, you know, I, I've been I've been kind of um, speaking through so many different revelations. I don't want to waste any time. Let me read your word verbatim. And then I want you to kind of narrate like what God was saying, you know, and, and what he was speaking. Guys, if you just joined this broadcast, I need you to hit the subscribe button, subscribe to my channel, and then tap that bell so you get notifications for lives. And some of you guys, this is going to increase your faith to be a part of a channel like this. Let me tell you why. Because um, there are so many things that are happening in our earth, and we we are saying them before they happen. Now, listen, not everything's a sign. We're not hokey. We're not weird. We don't sensationalize. But again, if, if you're a Christian and nothing is a sign to you ever, then I would say that you are missing the real signs. Because mm -hmm. we also can't be ignorant. If you rewind to go back into this broadcast, I took you through the book of Amos the book of Psalms, and then the book of Matthew to show how God across the entire Bible is giving us earthquakes as signs. Now, not every earthquake is a sign. There's been over 500 earthquakes since the 1700s in New York alone. And But, but again, to hit a 4.8 magnitude in the midst of this conversation about the eclipse, in the midst of this war that's happening in Gaza and in Israel, there's the totality of these things adding up. Now, is the eclipse a sign? I mean, it is kind of interesting, right, that the, that the earthquake was 4.8 and the eclipse is on April 8th. Is what's happening in Israel sign? Is the earthquake a sign? What I am telling you is I wholeheartedly believe that just like a mother that's in birthing pains and experiencing labor pains and that baby's coming down the canal, you don't always know the exact second that that baby will be delivered, but you do know that the mother is in is in delivery. The mother is in the labor pains. And so I believe that this earth is groaning, travailing, and it's the totality of all of these signs. And if you believe it, just tap the thumbs up so I can get a visual representation of, of how many people we've got over 705 thumbs up right now, actually believe that we are getting closer and closer to the end. So let me read this. It says, and this is what you wrote, I see shifting grounds in New York, which is eerily similar to what Prophet Randall said, tectonic plates. He said tectonic plates shifting. And then you said, I see shifting grounds in New York. This is January 11, 2024. I see what looks like an earthquake moving and shifting everything from the foundations. New York is the gateway to the world and the Lord is doing something new. I don't say this because I don't say this because I belong to a New York based church. I say this because the enemy has assaulted New York for far too long and the Lord is acting on his word to come to his people. I see him uplifting worldly systems at this epicenter and Christians coming in and challenging every system built by man. I see churches being at the forefront of change and taking mantles previously held by worldly figures. I see the ground shaking and a tearing away and being replaced with solid stone for a new wineskin to replace the old. A reformation has already started this year and will change the entire world. Now, I've got to say this. I'm going to read the last part. The ground is about to shake like never before. This is going to change everything. Be ready for God to move. Now, I have already planned to preach the largest spirit-filled conference in the nation of Switzerland. Josh and I were in Switzerland last year, and I'm headed to Switzerland soon. Switzerland was the battlegrounds of the Reformation. 
And we are filming for Domino Revival Part 2. And I told our camera team, we need to go to Switzerland this next time I'm going, which is just coming up months from now. And we need to record me at the places of the Reformation because I see another Reformation. I see a spiritual reforming that's happening to the body of Christ. And I see God shifting and God actually shaking and bringing ministries, false ministries, false structures down and raising up true structures. And I didn't even know. And yeah, some of you know, like CERN is also in Switzerland. Well, really powerful. I don't want to spend the whole rest of the time watching that. I do want to go to Switzerland. Um, but you guys can see that there certainly is some spiritual activity going on. And I just want to pray for you. If you're watching right now and you feel impacted by God in some ways, we've had this conversation, put a one in the chat, and I want to begin to pray for you right now. If that's you, you said, you know what, something happened as I'm watching this. God's stirring in my soul. It could be excitement. It could be um, anticipation. It, it could be a realization that there's some things in your heart and your life you need to hand over to God. Whatever it is, if you feel like there's something that God has put or highlighted to you, I want to right now just begin to pray for you. So just go ahead and if that's you, put a one in the chat. And I thank you, Lord, for this amazing opportunity that we've had to be able to be on the stream today as we've talked about these things. And I pray for people right now, God, that have been impacted and touched by you as we begin uh, to have these conversations about the eclipse, about earthquakes, about the sign, about really, God, what you're doing on this planet. And I know, Lord, I just feel it in my spirit for all of these people who are acknowledging you in the chat section right now. I feel it in my spirit, God, that there's certain, for some of you in particular, but all of you, there's certain things that he's called and asked you to do in this season, and you're about to see an overflow of his presence begin to flow into your life in ways you never even expected. I just see people right now in the chat section, as I'm praying for you, begin to step into a new layer of your destiny that you're not going to cower in fear, but you're going to stand up as a righteous example of what it means to live for God no matter what happens. And so I just declare right now in the the name of Jesus for people watching, for people that are receiving prayer, that God, you exalt them into a place of influence in their families, uh, in their apartment communities, in their workplaces to be used by you, God, to be an example of righteousness in this season. And I feel like some of you, God's put a message on your lips and you're going to begin to declare a, a message of hope to the people around you. I feel like you, some of you watching right now, you've been surrounded by people that are naysayers and negative and pessimistic. Uh, pessimism, but God's actually putting optimism of his hope in you to share with people around you. And so I just declare right now that you're so connected to Jesus that this hope comes spewing out of you. I feel like some of you right now, you need to just uh, understand that God is, is using you. I feel like the word, just the hope fountain. I hear the word saying hope fountain, that God's going to use you to be a hope fountain to the people around you, that people are going to watch you and they're going to be amazed at you because of the way that you're filled with hope, despite the obstacles that you're facing, that the world's facing. And so I declare for people watching right now who want to receive it, that you are to be a hope fountain fountain in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And I bless them watching now in Jesus name. Amen. 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 You guys are absolutely amazing. And guys, we're almost out of time. One more thing I want to do today, since it is our faith Friday, we usually do faith Friday. Uh, this is our online ministry called movement church. We do on Friday nights. One thing that I want to do just as we're closing out the stream, because uh, what we do here is actually a ministry and it's a very important ministry. We're sharing messages and hopes uh, in it, to a secular audience that I don't know if very many other people are, if anybody else is really doing it in the way that we're doing it, reaching an audience that I don't think anybody else is really reaching. And I want to give you an opportunity to sow seeds financially into that and support through tithes and offering what God's doing. And so I put a link in the chat and I pinned that link to the top of the chat. And that's the best way to give is by clicking that link that I've pinned and supporting that way. And we're going to say an offering prayer out loud together. You can also support through PayPal, Cash App, 
or Venmo. That information is down there on the bottom of the screen. But would you say this offering prayer out loud with me today as we receive today's offering? We are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. And thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah and amen. And I just want to pray for those of you today that are giving and supporting financially. Father, I bless people that are watching right now as they give financially and support the work of the ministry. Your word actually says you'll rebuke the devourer over their life. And so I just declare right now in the name of Jesus that every single uh, thing that the devil has tried to put in their way will not stand in their way, but instead you'll release victory over them in Jesus' name. I release victory over them in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I bless them now for your great grace. Thank you, Jesus. I release your great grace over hope fountains that are watching now in Jesus' precious name. Kenneth says, Faith Friday, you're amazing, Kenneth. Thank you for your support. Amy Heights says, Movement Church, love you all. We love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Cat Joy, thank you for that amazing gift. Thank you for just leading the way with generosity and teaching us how to do that. St. Jenny, thank you for, uh, for giving online, and Barbara as well. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for your support. Um, financially. and uh, Laura from Long Island, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you are awesome. I love what Karen says. Hallelujah and amen. Hallelujah and amen. Happy caffeinated couple. Thank you so much for giving online as well. Um, you guys are awesome, awesome, awesome. And thank you guys so much for spending this time together on the stream uh, together this evening. Um, I'm in a situation where I um, just really used up all my energy this weekend, and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make it through the stream today. In fact, there was a couple of minutes before the stream started. I thought maybe I should even just cancel the stream, but I had to tap into this place of grace from God because I'm just so tired. Um, but I felt like the Holy Spirit came, and God actually moved and worked through the stream today. And so I appreciate you guys being here. I hate missing Faith Friday. I never want to miss it. And then obviously um, I missed it because I was hosting that men's conference. And then I was so tired that men's conference. I just got home from it because it went Friday, all Friday night and then all day Saturday until just a little bit ago that, I mean, I, I, it really took a lot out of me. And then I was, I came home and I fell asleep and then I woke up and it was literally 6.45 and I was like, oh my gosh. And I was just in a situation where I felt like, man, I'm going to, I wonder if I should cancel the stream. But I pressed past that through the power of the Holy Spirit and I felt God move mightily on our Faith Friday stream today. And so I just wanted to share that testimony with you that sometimes even when you don't feel like it, when you don't see it, when you... um you know, kind of want to give in in a way that there's a grace that can come upon you because that's exactly what I felt tonight on the stream. I felt a grace of the Lord come upon me and even anoint our time together. And I hope that many of you watching were encouraged. And I feel honestly, I felt like the biggest takeaway, and it takes a while to get there because we got to spend time with the Lord and discern like the scripture says what he's saying and doing and we hear from uh, that's the way my brain works i hear from very several different sources and understand what scripture says and understand what people that are gifted with uh, prophecy say and then the lord i feel like begins to speak to me but i just felt so strongly that word hope fountain some of you are hope fountains that people are going to watch you and i feel like that's the word of the lord today and for so many of you, and I, I feel like just um, so encouraged that that was a word that I've never even thought about the word hope fountain before. I just felt like that was straight from the Lord for somebody or multiple people that are watching. So I hope you feel encouraged. Patricia, thank you so much. And MJ, thank you so much for your tremendous generosity. You are absolutely amazing. Margie, thank you for the gift over on Cash App as well. Thank you guys so much for being on the stream. That's all. 
I have time or energy for today. Uh, but I, I love you. So appreciative of you. And I'll be back very, very soon. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Have a great 